Right, thank you, Bridget. Man, we are flying through May, and it is getting there. We're not quite triple digits, which is nice. We're just getting a taste right now. But man, we're in this series, and I love it. Um, I'm biased. I, I love all the series. But get ready to live. Why wouldn't we want to live as Christians? We should have the best lives, even in the struggles, even when there's problems. We know our Lord and Savior who came for us while we weren't worthy to make us worthy, to give us that hope. And today, we're continuing on this Get Ready to Live series with talking about fight for the right. Don't be satisfied. See, we're not fighting to argue. We're not fighting to be like at someone's throat. We're fighting because he is so worth it. That anything we do, we should try to learn and grow to be just like him. So we get the chance to dive in and study the word and then live it. And man, we should get ready to live and we should fight because we have a Lord and Savior that is so amazing. See, when we understand that, we never have to settle as believers. We don't have to just fit in. We don't have to let go of the beliefs we have in the word of God. We can live them out. See, we can fight for the truth, and we should fight for the truth, because he is the truth, the only truth that matters. See, he's not a truth. He is the truth. And I think we, we miss up on that sometimes when we're trying just to get through life without that fight. See, when we have the spirit of understanding the truth and what Jesus did for us, we will desire to fight and live it out. And that's so important to us at Christ Church. We're here to not only come in and just learn, we're here to learn and live our faith. That's why most of our missions are active. Most of our thoughts, and, and when I share something and I'm out talking with the team or the staff or the elders or people, it's to live what we're going through and learning. Get ready to live. See, we don't, and we won't be satisfied with mediocrity. And we won't settle for the status quo. See, our hearts will long to know the truth, which will set us free. And we always are hearing and hearing the chirpings of, we want to be free. We're a free country. We want to be free. Man, we cannot be free unless we lock into the truth because it will set us free. I love it. Paul's talking to Timothy and he's trying to train him because he's going to be sharing the good news in different places, mainly Ephesus. And I love it in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. I want you to hear that. For all who eagerly look forward to his appearing, that should, that should excite us. See, we went through a hard time a couple years ago with COVID and, and things going on. And people were like going, is this the end times? And there were, there, there's fear and, and worry. We should be eagerly waiting for the return of Jesus. See, that should excite us, not make us afraid. But yet, we locked into fear about everything. And Paul's sharing, this crown of righteousness is for us when we run the race to win when we do this for him, when we're locking in and we should be expecting, man, Jesus, come back today. It will be gain. It will be better for all of us if he comes back. Now, again, we'll say, I know we have families. We have people distant. We have people that don't know Jesus maybe, but all we can do is plant seeds in water and be ready so we have to keep growing, and we should still want Jesus to come back. It's not our job to make people choose him. God will make it grow. We just got to keep doing it. But man, when we're eager 
for Jesus to come back, that's how we can truly live. That's how we will fight. Fighting for the truth and the right will push us past being comfortable. See, when we're fighting for truth, we won't just settle in and and we won't just sit there and let the world do whatever it wants. We will stand up and love that we have a Lord that came and died for us when we were not worthy. And that'll make us want to fight. I love what Warren Worsby says. He says, man, I wish I would have met him. (laughs) Of all the commentaries I read, it's like him and I were brothers separated by like 50, 60 years. But everything I read from him is like, man, that's how I see it. And it's so good. He says, if we love Christ's appearing, living in obedience to his will and doing the work he has called us to do, we will be crowned. How cool is that? See, we should be excited to get ready to live. Why? There's a crown awaiting us crown of righteousness that he wants to give us. That should make us so excited. See, to be able to fight, we we need to know why and believe it is real and worth it. This is just a reality. People don't fight for things they don't need and they don't fight for things they don't want or that don't make a difference to them. Why wouldn't you fight for Jesus, a Lord and Savior that came while you were and I was, were sinners, and we struggled, and he came anyways to do the Father's will. See, he surrendered his will to live and show us how to do this so we can go home. That's why we're excited to live. When we understand that, we'll fight for everything that he offers us. And I want it. See, then we understand the Holy Spirit in us, who's leading us in the fruit of the Spirit. See, then we'll start living that fruit out, love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and kindness and self-control. See, we'll start living that way. That's how we're supposed to be living. That's living truly in this world for Christ with those things piled on. And then we'll realize God is for us. God is for us. It might get tough. We might not understand, but he set it up already. See, if we're believers and we understand what Paul understood as he was going through the craziest times of life, being stoned, being whipped, being beaten, being put in jail, he says, for me, living means living for Christ. Then dying is gain. See, when we understand what he did for us, he's for us. Because no matter what happens in this world, if we know Jesus as Lord and Savior, and we've confessed and we've repented, and we're going through that growth and maturity as we're getting better, because we won't be perfect until we go home. See, now we see we can fight. And man, it should make us excited to fight. Believe means to trust in, to hold firm, to hold a firm conviction about, to accept as true, genuine or real. See, if you believe in Jesus, see, now it's you trust in him. See, the truth that we learn In the word of God, the Bible, which is one of our essentials, which is 100% truth to us, Old Testament, New Testament, we can trust in it and we hold firm to the convictions. So when it tells us something, which it's telling us for our own good and for the good of others, see, it's going to show us what's wrong in this world and help us do what is right. See, it's genuine and it's real. That's what we get when we understand and we open up and fight because Jesus is worth it. Look at John chapter 1, starting in verse 6. It says, God sent a man, John the Baptist, 
to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believe him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. To all who believed him and accepted him. It's the only religion that is relational, not religion-based. See, it's, it's understanding what he's done for us already by surrendering his will, doing his will instead of the Father's, and only doing what the Father told us. For all who believed, he's not trying to keep anyone out. He wants everyone in. That's why the Bible says the Father's slow to send Jesus back, because he wants no one to miss out. He wants everyone to repent. See, they are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. See, why is this so important? It says the word became human. The word became human. It's exactly what Christ is and what he wanted us to know and understand. It's not just a book. It's alive and active. That's why we share to read it every day. Because we need it every day. Again, it's not a box checking thing. It's if you want to live life to get ready to live and be able to fight, and you should want to know the one who became flesh and died for you. So much where you can live through anything and fight through anything. He came, he surrendered his will, and he died and rose so we could live. He is the good news, and he is worth fighting for. Paul shares in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 24, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. Run to win. Are you sitting back, hoping someone pulls you along, or are you running to win? All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. Do you see how important it is to understand how to get ready to live and how we can fight? See, Paul runs with purpose. Do we run with purpose or do we just run? Do we just get up? Do we not open up and ask God, what should I do today? How can I get better today? Well, I want to be doing your will. Help me and forgive me because I probably messed up. And he's right there. See, run with purpose. We all have a purpose. We all have a plan to do for God. That's to shine his light for others. To keep showing people love and truth. Not worldly love, but real biblical love. See, so I run with purpose, he said, in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I'm not just doing it to do it. There's purpose. I have to evangelize the people. I have to share that good news, and then I have to disciple them. See, it has to come together because we can evangelize and get people here and not help them, and then they're lost just like they were before, except they know a fancy word or two. So we disciple, and that's huge because he told us to go into all the world, make disciples. Man, in the fall, we're going to do discipleship, all of us. And I hope you want to lock in because if you don't want a disciple, I'm going to introduce you to a book you should read. It'll show you how important that is and how it makes a difference and why he's slow 
to send Jesus back so we can all hear and see and get through the hard times and we can still understand because we were going to fight. And we're going to fight for each soul that's out there that's lost and we're going to teach them truth or they're going to stay lost. We're not going to accept their way of life because they like it because that's not truth. And that leads them to the same place. Separation from God for eternity. And we don't want that. So I love Paul's heart. He says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Why does he keep working through his life? I've run the race. I'm going to keep doing it with purpose, he says. He's, he's authored with God's provision 17 books out of 66, but he's still am going to live with purpose. I will keep working. I will keep growing. I want you to keep working and keep growing. I've been a believer for just under 20 years, and I will keep working harder and harder because I need to. And I want you to understand we are doing this together. Jesus is the head. We are the body. We're only as good as each other so we can keep growing and your talent can be used where my talent is not as good and vice versa. And we grow to be like Christ and we all fight for that. See, it says run with purpose in every step. Not every other step. Not sometimes, not when I feel like it. It's hard. I don't want to do it today. And that's when you step through and God gives you the best feeling. There's times when my wife and I have been doing this for almost 20 years and we've led groups for 20 years and done something. There's times where, man, you're tired and you don't want to have group. And every time we're tired and we don't want to have group and we have group, it's always been the best fulfilling group we've had. See, God knows we're tired. He gives us the strength. And when we do it on our own strength, we're going to get tired and we're going to stop fighting. Man, fight for the right to say, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. I'm quoting Warren Worsby again because I like it. And he shares a lot of biblical wisdom says, the Christian does not run the race in order to get to heaven. See, he is in the race because he has been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. See, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't run the race anyways. You're running the world, trying to get through, and there won't be peace and joy no matter what you do. That's why all these rich people that are worldly are struggling just as much as anyone else. They don't have that connection, that, that trust, that hope that we get from Christ. See, to fight, we have to believe the purpose will benefit us and the world. Again, our, our walk is not for us anymore. When we accept Jesus, that's it. That's cool for us. That gives us that next step. But now we're on a mission for others. We should be mission mindset, others mindset. We should want to grow and invite and talk to people and share. See, we can't be satisfied by not locking in and fighting for our Lord and Savior. See, we'll keep the truth always and we'll share it until we go to heaven, until we go home. See, when we fight for the right, we go all in. See, we hold the line and our faith becomes unwavering. See, that's our mission this year. Hold the line. Hold the line is not stepping back. It's coming together, locking arms and fighting and having that faith that's unwavering so we make a difference. I love this story. This woman in 2014, Miriam... I'm going to butcher her last name, Ibrahim. It says, in 2014, the young, then pregnant wife and mother was arrested for apostasy, accused of abandoning her Islam for Christianity. She was told that she had three days to renounce her Christian faith, but she refused. 
I am Christian and will remain Christian, she said. After a court ruling, she was sentenced by the Sudanese court to death by hanging. Ibrahim spent months chained in a prison floor with her one-year-old son by her side. She gave birth to her daughter with her legs chained together inside a jail cell a month before her release. The Sudanese court lifted the death sentence and spared her life. In an interview with Fox News' Megyn Kelly, she said, the situation was difficult, but I was sure that God would stand by my side. She refused to abandon God, even when facing fogging and hanging for being a Christian and married a Christian in a largely Muslim country. She was not afraid, crediting God and her children for her bravery. See, that's unwavering faith. See, that's what fighting for your faith means. That's why we are getting ready to live. I want that strength. See, God doesn't always take us out of the problem. See, the problems are here to help us grow. But man, she's going to stick her feet in the ground and she was going to be Christian because God meant something to her and she was, it was worth the fight to her. Is it worth the fight to us? See, the series is called Get Ready to Live with an exclamation point at the end. Again, there should nothing in this world should be more exciting than getting ready to live for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Look at 1 Corinthians 10, starting in verse 31. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Don't give offense to Jews or Gentiles or the church of God. I too try to please everyone in everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me. I do what is best for others so that they may be saved. 11 verse 1 goes on to say, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. See, everything Paul did was to imitate Jesus Christ. And again, it was not easy. I love it. I was talking to one of the elders when he was stoned and, and, and cast out. He just got up, wiped the dust off, and went to the next town to talk the good news. And then there, he, he was beaten to death, or beaten severely and thrown in prison, and he still shared the good news. See, nothing will stop his fight. And that's what he's sharing. And I love it because we can do that because our strength cannot do it for us. It has to be Christ. The strength he gives us, he's in us. The Holy Spirit's living us, teaching us only his truth. So we open up to share the truth with everyone and we let them know how much they're loved. See, if we're all sinners and we all fall short, everyone has a different sin that's going to make them struggle and... <laughs> If it's a sin that we've been doing for years, we're going to believe that sin is okay because we're not going to think it's sin sometimes. See, that's why it's so important that we dive in to understand what the Word says and we care for people because He cared enough to send His Son while we were not worthy. We can't do anything too bad that His mercy won't cover us when we believe in Him and we accept Him and we repent, and we know that he is there to help us as Lord and Savior. See, if you're coming here with fear or shame or guilt or hate, let it go and know he doesn't hold on to your past. You don't have to either. No matter what it is that makes us fall short, we got to let it go. And he loves us. He wants us to understand it's okay to die to yourself and become new. See, when we understand fighting for the right, we will work hard to please him, not this world. I hope you get that. We're not trying to please our friends. We're not trying to please our parents. We're not trying to please anyone except for him. And we will start to transform into the new creation he tells us we are. Here's a take home for today. 
These are characteristics I got looking up. And this is a fight trainer, a boxing trainer. And he wrote these things down. And I loved it because you can see how important these things are for our walk as well. So the guy was Ed Lattimore. Again, he trained boxers. And I just wanted to share with him in a spiritual sense. Number one is physical fitness. As believers, we must train ourselves physically so we can be ready for his work. His work's going to be tough sometimes. We have to dive in. We have to be ready. So we train ourselves to be physically fit. I went to, to Israel recently, and we walked over 17,000 steps a day. I was not physically trained for that. There's a lot of nights I lay there going, oh, gosh, are we flying home yet? Because my legs, I could not feel my feet or my knees. And the next day I knew we we're going to do it again. And it was 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Getting a little short bus ride and then walk. But man, that's just to go see things. See, he's asking us to go do things. He's asking us to be missionaries maybe. Not all of us. Again, we're all gifted differently. But there's times you're going to have to be physically fit because you might go to Uganda. We have, a, we have a school that we have really been the biggest donator for from Christ Church in Uganda. Well, if you go there and you're not physically fit, it's going to be tough. You're not going to eat normal. You're going to exercise in the heat. You're going to be doing things. Are you ready? So train yourself to get ready. Again, everyone's at a different place. But train yourself because you never know when you're going to be used. See, if we are to go into the world, we need to be fit enough physically, but we also need to be fit enough spiritually. See, with the physical fitness part, spiritual training is more important. So when we get there, we teach truth. We don't just teach what people want to hear. See, 1 Timothy 4, 8 says, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits for this life and in the life to come. And you could be the best fit person, run marathons, do everything you can and not know one thing about God and there'd be nothing for you. So you have to combine it and understand we have to learn spiritually and we have to be physically fit. Number two, mental toughness. The Bible tells us to renew our mind daily. It's mentally challenging because this world will constantly change the boundaries. If you're not ready mentally, they will change what they want to believe is truth every single day. See, God doesn't change at all. He's the same yesterday, today, and for always. There's no progressive growth growth. There's no, oh gosh, I tried all these years. I got to change it now so people get it. There's one truth, one way, one life. That's it. Mentally be ready for a fight. Stay firm in the truth. Be mentally tough. Romans 12, 2, we read it a couple weeks ago in a different translation, but I love this. In the whole Holgram Christian Standard Bible translation, it says, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you don't conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our mind will lead us the wrong way if we don't fill it with the right. If we just fill it with the world, we're going to get the world out of it. Even if we say, well, I believe, I go to church on Sunday. But then there's Monday to Saturday that the world's going to flow and fill you with garbage. A lot of garbage. We have to renew it. Don't conform. Renew your mind daily so that you may discern. Listen, I love it. See, it's part of our walk in relationship with Jesus so we can discern what is the good and pleasing, perfect will of God. 
He's saying, I give you everything you need. Now you go study and you choose me and I will give you everything so you can discern what's right and wrong. That's why we fight. Number three, emotional resilience. Our walk will get emotional. We will go through things that are hard and that we don't understand. Again, we just went through an emotional time the last couple years. And it's only going to get worse, it says in the Bible. We don't belong to this world. So are you ready? You better be emotionally resilient. You might lose family members that don't believe. You still love them, but you might have different challenges. Fight for his truth. Shine his light and lay those seeds down in water and God will make it happen. If people don't choose him, that's not on you. All you can do is what God has given you the strength to do. But man, it will get emotional when it hits home. See, emotional resilience is given only through Jesus. When we think we can't do it, remember we only can because of him. Luke 18, 24, or 27 says, and it's right after Jesus is telling them how hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. He says, he replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God. Only through his strength can we do any of this without falling into the world again. Don't let your emotions change his truth to your truth. See how important emotional stuff is? Resilience. Don't let your emotions, your feelings, oh, that felt so good though. Oh, that girl is so important to me. Oh, that boy is so cute. And don't let that change the truth about everything that he has laid out for you because you want it to be your truth. We stand firm and we lock in our life to do it exactly like this. And it's hard. That's why we needed him. That's why we need a savior, because it's too hard for us. That's why through the commandments and all the laws, they had to send Jesus so he could fulfill them. He didn't get rid of them. He fulfilled them to strengthen the boundaries that God has set up. Fighting takes emotional resilience. Number four, spiritual determination. We as believers have the Holy Spirit living in us. So we should have the determination to fight only for his lead in our lives because we know it will be the only truth we need. It's so much easier to know the truth and to let it set you free and to keep studying it because, again, the devil's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. He will try every little thing to tweak it so you fall and let the world lead Keep fighting and to be excited to do that. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed to his glorious image. See, we're changed when we let him transform us. We don't conform. We're changed to his glorious image. Now we work and work and work to continue to grow, to fight, to be like him. And then in 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 1, it says, Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. Fight for your right. Jesus' culture is the only culture worth fighting for. We have to let go and let God I want to finish by reading this psalm in Psalm 63. And look how cool this is to line up exactly how we get ready and how we see God. And how by seeing God this way, we can fight because he loves us. In verse 1, it says, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land. 
where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. You consider us worthy enough to send your son. Help us to feel the same way about our fight for knowing him, living like him, and being just like him. Help us to die to ourselves, to let go of all our own feelings and selfish ambitions, and help us dive in to fight so we can live here on earth as it is in heaven. We love you, and we thank you. Keep us strong in Jesus' name.